Wayward Courier Chapter 9 When I came to, I was in a cell, and they take in my helmet, my coat, and all my weapons, even the magnum tucked into my back of my pants. Oh, and all of my chems and food! I also had a mild hangover and a massive headache from where I got kicked. According to my pit boy, I had a, had a concussion and somehow taken 148 rads. Also, for the cell, well, it was definitely comfortable as far as cells go. Something you could call a bed, except it was short for me, was on one of the walls. A small bowl, I'm guessing it was so I could take a shit or something when I needed to. A small window with bars, of course, and they left me an apple on the ground, too. So nice of them. So, I took the apple and took a look out the window. Don't know what I ex ex uh, expected to see, but what I s did set, my, set me off the edge. There were a bunch of ponies walking around in armor. I should have I showed you the Le Legate's armor, right? The stuff I took off of Lanius. Well, it looked a bit like that. Only a bit it seemed a lot more decorative. I suppose also the helmet was completely open and a plum was blue and seemed to run along the body, if that makes sense. Taking a closer look though, I felt very stupid about what I did. Five seconds of closer inspection was enough to tell me that they looked nothing like the Legion and I had punched one of them in the throat after I had cracked my bottle of Apson over his head. I was exceptionally upset about that. I had only had half the bottle when I did that. I was actually happy when the sound of someone clearing their throat behind me got my attention. Something to take my mind off what, what, what I have done, you know. Princess Celestia was old. There was no denying that. She had seen Equestria raised from tribes squabbling over resources to a proud kingdom that spanned thousands of miles. She had fought the Avatar of Disharmony, countless demons, even her own sister at her unfortunate demonic process position. She had held she had held talks with griffins, minotaurs, buffalo, diamond dogs, and even the exclusive sea ponies. So, to say that there were something in the castle's dungeons that had never been seen before anywhere in Equestria was strange. She was sure at first that it was simply something that had been lost to the mists of time and had only just resurfaced. Her first thought was that maybe it was a flutter pony. Maybe she maybe hadn't seen one in centuries, or maybe a grundle. Well, what, what was in the cell, though, wasn't a flutter pony or a grundle. It was closer to a minotaur, but the torso was much slimmer, a bindle in nature, and wearing much clothing. What little hair she could see on top of its head was gentle brown, messy and unkempt. Its face had a number of scars, the most noticeable one that ran the the front from the bottom of his left eye to the top of his lip in in a curve what she noticed most though was it turned to face her were the eyes they are called the windows to the soul and for good reason what she felt in the depths of the dull green orbs was something she had never truly expected. Immeasurable pain and suffering, both felt by the creature inflicted upon others. Deep sorrow and hatred directed at the same target. A burning desire to, to right any preserved wrongs. Perhaps the most significant, though, was hope and shining beacon in his heart that guided his actions. A simple look in his eyes told her that there was no way on this world, pony, griffin, or otherwise, who had the slightest idea what he had been through. Not even her. This one, well, it was interesting. A perfectly white coat, a horn that could be used a weapon without resorting to flesh gulifying someone, and wings that actually seemed somewhat fictional. I didn't see the wings in use, but they certainly seemed that way. The mane and tail, though, they were the interesting part. 
they seemed to move on their own. Like there was a wind that I couldn't just feel. Also shiny. I'd also bet that if I were to stick my hand in there, I immediately absorb a lethal dose of rads. She was wearing a crown and a lot of jewelry, and was a lot taller than the other ones I've seen before. I assumed that she was unique, which wasn't exactly the case. Oh, and, and we talked for a bit, and I was in a cell, it's not like I was going anywhere. <laughs> Greetings, Celestia said. Cautiously, subtly, making her words understandable to all. Nice to meet you, he replied, taking a bite of the apple. Ah, Zebrakin, Celestia thought. That makes things easier. Nice to meet you, too, the alicorn replied cordially. Cordially, I am Princess Celestia, and I am the courier. The princess rose an eyebrow. That's more, that's more a title than a name. She said, an eyebrow raised. But I'm sure you have your reasons, she added with a smile. He shrugged as he chewed on his apple. I used to be a courier. It kind of stuck. Not that I mind. He swallowed his mouthful and wiped his mouth with his hand. Beside, besides, couriers are the backbone of the Mojave. We make or break towns. He let out a chuckle as he took another bite. You don't know. You don't mess with the guy who delivers your mail. Celestia decided decided that statement was far from important and decided to ask something that had worried her. I understand you were you were brought here for attacking a member of my guard. Before she could get any further, he raised a hand and interrupted her. I want to apologize for that. I was drunk and I thought they belonged to Caesar's Legion. Twilight mentioned you were a soldier. Celestia said quietly, is that who you were fighting, this legion? Technically, I am a civilian contractor. I fought the legion because they were frantic pack of rapists, slavers, and murderers that had un united under a single banner and gotten their hands on some powerful weapons. Centuries of practice was the only thing that let Celestia stop herself from showing her horror. They base their armor and structure and culture on ancient civilization, right down to treating women as animals and nailing people to crosses. If that is the case, I am glad that you fought against them. The alabaster alicorn replied, keeping her rage under control. For a matriarchal society like Equestria, the idea of females being treated as any less than equal was one that very nearly led to where where warfare in the past I heard that you that you're responsible for the deaths of two dozen diamond dogs that many he asked thought it was less not that it matters they got what they deserved he said with a shrug Celestia was taken back by his brutal honesty and discard just do you not care that you take took the lives of those with families she asked while the topic would have repulsed any pony else, having lived for who knows how long had the benefit of insulating one from the horrors that could be found in the world. The way I see it, the lost, they lost any rights they had to be called people the moment they decide to enslave children, he replied. The hate and anger in his voice was astounding so much so, so that Celestia was tempted there and then to search his soul for any trace of a demon akin to the one responsible for the creation of Nightmare Moon. They should be thankful I ended them swiftly. How can you be so comfortable with murdering? Celestia asked. In her long life, she had seen countless vigilantes and was curious about his reasonings. Murder? He asked. It's not murder when you kill someone so drugged up they don't know what's real. That's mercy. It's not murder when they attack you first. That's self-defense. It, it's not murder when you know they've killed innocents. That, that's justice. And it's definitely not murder when they're slavers. That is a service to the world. He finished, locking his eyes with the princess. The passion and, and drive behind his words, as, as well as the experience you could feel was more than enough to convince her that the he was honest 
He was honestly felt that way. I see, she said, uh, n neutrally. In the carriage of the Friendship Express to Canterlot, six mares shared a compartment. What do you mean you told the princess he was a psychopath? That's because he is! You saw the way he killed those diamond dogs. He did that to save Apple Bloom, Sweetie Belle, and Scootaloo. And he saved me from a pair of manacores. How could you betray him like that? You said yourself that he was going to kill you. Girls, I'm trying to concentrate. And he threatened me with one of his strange metal weapon things. After you bucked him in the stallion hood. What the hey, Apple AJ? Ah, oh, that was going to hurt Twy. Ah, oh, I thought he was going to hurt Twy. Will you keep it down? A male voice yelled from the next compartment. Sorry. Twilight yelled back. Great. Now look what you have done. She hissed. Me? Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't realize it was me that brought a mass murderer, murderer to Ponyville, the farmer said. He is not a mass murderer. Will you keep it quiet? Exclaimed a mare that was pinker than any living thing had any right to be. I am trying to plan a party. Are you serious, Pinky? You're planning a party for a mon for that monster? Shut up or I'll we'll have you thrown off this train, came the male voice again. Author's note, I am r rubbing the whole matriarchal society thing in a bit too hard. And that is my actual justification for what my career does in-game. Self-defense, mercy, justice, and service to humanity for the most part. 